Hey guys, World of Lewis here. Something I've been meaning to talk about for a while are uh, skill challenges in Dungeons & Dragons 4th edition. And what I'm not going to do is talk about how to generate them. If you're looking to build your chops or looking in on how to generate skill challenges, I go to your Dungeon Master's channel and look at his video on skill challenge generation. I think he does an amazing job and he's really concise and thorough. Another thing I definitely recommend doing is picking up a copy of the Dungeon Master's Guide too, because that's going to be crucial and it really explores and looks into skill challenges in a way that Dungeon Master's Guide 1 doesn't even do at all. So what I'm going to be talking about in this video is um, skill skill challenges and role playing and you know immersion of role playing in the skill challenge as well as determining the difficulty checks and skill challenges and some of the problems that you'll run into running skill challenges as a DM. I think the number one problem a DM comes into when running a skill challenge is that the players automatically look at their skills and they choose their best skill to use for a skill challenge even though th that skill doesn't relate to the task at hand whatsoever. Now a way to get away from this is one is to use lower difficulties and that's what Dungeon Master Guide 2 changes among many things for skill challenges from Dungeon Master's Guide 1 that it lowers difficulties to 5, 10, 15 for easy, moderate, and difficult challenges for a party level of 1 to 3. Now, the reason that you want to use these abilities is because if you have something that's easy to do, but you make it more difficult with a um, di more difficult with difficulty check, is that that is going to automatically um, bolster the player's natural inclination to use their highest skill, which is something that you want to get away from. So how you're going to get away from that is that you're going to set boundaries, and now. And you'll set boundaries through role-playing, not through um, giving guidelines and rules. Now, I guess a scenario that I'm going to use is the classic, the ubiquitous urban chase scenario. Because it's just the easiest to relate to. Alright, so let's set the stage. The player characters have spotted an NPC with whom they need to interrogate. And the NPC has caught on to the player characters and he's running for it. You know, he sees them, so the player character, the NPC, starts running away from the player characters, and he runs through like a local bazaar marketplace, and he's like, oh, you know, he's booking, he's pushing people out of the way, he's creating a disturbance, he's creating a ruckus, you know, and he gets away, and the player, and he um, kind of makes a slip on the player characters. So the player characters come to the bazaar, and they have lost sight of the NPC, and this is where we'll say the skill challenge starts. Now, what I do is I make the player's role initiative just to see who goes first, just so everyone isn't chiming in at once and saying, I use this, I use that, at once. And let's say, for example, the fighter wins initiative, and he says, I'm going to use athletics. You know, I have a high athletics, high endurance, I use athletics. And then I'll say, well, you have lost sight of the NPC. You're not sure where, where he, he ran. So athletics doesn't really pertain to this right now. You have to figure out, you have to discern where the character has gone. And you can do one or two things. You can let a character or player delay, or you can say, oh, well, it's too urgent. Would your character delay in real life? You know, would your fighter say, hmm, maybe I'll ask the uh, ranger, you know, to see if he can s have spot the NPC. You know, and I, I would get away from that. I would say that you should make a player character make a snap decision in something like the urban chase scene. And, you know, and then you would say to the player, well, you're not sure where the NPC went. How do you, what do you want to do? Then he'll, there's really only two things that the, the fighter can do. Usually, use perception to try and notice, um, you know, movements or something in the crowd, traces of the NPC in the crowd that he left trying to run through. 
or also ask um, pedestrians of the marketplace what they saw. And now here's where I'm going to get to um, determining difficulty checks. Now, asking a bunch of player, a bunch of um, NPCs in a bazaar if they noticed some guy, you know, running through a crowd that's usually, you know, meandering slowly, looking through wares, you know, noticing something that out of place is going to be an easy um, difficulty. It's going to be an, an easy task. Even for a fighter that has a, say, 8 charisma and a minus 1 to his um, skill checks, you know, he's going to uh, go up and he's going to ask, you know, have you noticed anyone traveling through here, anyone running through here? And any, any um, NPC that is there <laughs> is going to have seen that and it's going to relay the information. It's not, there's no need to make that a 10 or 7 difficulty you know, or moderate, diff hard difficulty, you know, it just would make no sense. You know, just because a fighter has a bad charisma and he comes up and he, and he asks an NPC, have you seen, oh, have you, have you seen someone racing through here? You know, the, the NPC, even if the, the player character, you know, has a frightful visage that would scare small children and give elderly a heart attack, you know, the NPCs, are still going to, you know, see that, and they're going to say, yeah, I saw a guy, he ran that way, now leave me alone. They're not going to say, well, gee, your charisma's too low, so um, I'm not going to tell you what I saw, because you have a bad charisma. That just makes no sense. And, you know, in, in making a, a difficulty higher than five in that scenario is, isn't justifiable. Now, there are room, or there is you know, room for an error or a failure there. You know, if someone has a very low charisma or minus two charisma, they can still get a one or a four. And what I would think a one or a four would be is if the character rolls a four. And now here, another point is how you role play and how you use a character, a player's role to add flavor to the game. So the character, the fighter comes up and he's like, I want to, I guess I'll have to use streetwise so he rolls you know and he rolls a five and he has minus one for his eight charisma so he, it turns to a four so now what I would say would be you know you ask um, a person what they saw and that person's response is just looking at you with blank astonishment and that would be because they you just have the bad luck of asking the only you know deaf mute at the at the uh, bazaar you know or the the um, fighter would ask, "Have you, guy, seen?" Arr. Just completely, he's so uncharismatic and so uncomfortable in social situations that he fumbles over his words, and the NPC is like, "What? What are you talking about? Are you insane?" Now, when determining something like you know a moderate difficulty check, you know, it it would be determining on your NPC. So if you have a, a stealthy lurker traveling through a crowd, you know, even at high space places, he's not going to really leave many tell, telltale signs, you know, that he went through. Whereas if you have a massive brute just going, running through people, knocking stalls over, you know, if in the case of the, uh, the brute, you know, a perception, perception check to see where he went through the bazaar is going to be easy, you know, because he's... Not, you're going to see a bunch of people knocked over, and you're going to see a, um, you know, just just signs of, of, of a disturbance. But now, if it's a, a very stealthy character, you know, he'll be running through, but you know, he won't be pushing people over, and he won't be um, knocking things over and causing a big disturbance. So perception is going to be a little bit more difficult. So you know, I would probably assign a moderate difficulty to a, a more stealthy NPC, and. And why I wouldn't use that example with um, the streetwise check also, because even if someone is stealthy and they're running through a crowd, it's still enough of a difference from what the normal people at the bazaar or the marketplace are doing that an average person would notice.
you know, an average person that was in that area would notice someone, even racing through, even if they were a high stealth character. Well, you know, that kind of wraps up what I want to say, what I want to, you know, what I have to say about the subject.